Hello again, and welcome to Stacy. And I'm here from the advisor, and I'm very excited because I have a very special guest. She has a podcast on our channel. She's part of our podcast community, and she's just amazing. She has recently written a book, and she is an author. And her name is Brenda Neck. Nick Bodick, and she is just an amazing individual. She has a lot of experience in the business world. And today she's going to be talking about dealing with difficult people and building high performance teams. And she has a lot of knowledge in that area. And she has a lot of great tips and tools that I think you're really going to enjoy. So everybody, welcome Brenda. And Brenda, it's a pleasure to have you here. I'm so excited to have you again on the show. And I'm so excited that you have your own podcast with us. Oh, you know, thank you. Tell everybody a little about yourself and, and what you do. Oh, so I am, I, so I'm a recovering human resource professional of 30 years and I affectionately known as the Grim Reaper. And what I do is I work with leaders to help them kind of cut through that drama that's happening at work. So then that way they can grow and scale their business and reach new levels of success. And uh, yeah, I talk a lot about that stuff. I am a officially now a three-time best-selling offer. Since the last time we talked, I was just two. So I'm pretty proud of that. That's yeah. a very exciting thing. Yep. So we'll talk about it. Because we talked about the book the last time. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about it this time too. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm just here to help people deal with, oh my gosh, so much that goes into dealing with extremely difficult people or what somebody perceives as somebody who's being difficult. They may not be difficult, but they could be perceived as being difficult. Right. Yeah. And I think we have that in a lot of offices. Like, you know, I, I talk to people all the time. I work with people all the time. And there are always those certain people that just get under everybody's skin. It, you know, it's just either the way they do things or the way they word things, the way they, you know, um, they interact with people. It's just not good. Now, I know that you have some um, really great tips and tools. And you were talking about the diversity of thought also, and you were mentioning some great things that could really help people when you have people in your office that are difficult to work with and you really need a structured environment so you can grow and be profitable, you know, so what's your intake? Like, how do you deal with a difficult person? So, so that is a wide, that's a wide net cat to cast. I mean, one of the things you have to realize is that when you're just dealing with somebody who's difficult in general is, you know, and you have to deal with your responses and your reactions to it first, right. right? It's, you know, it's so easy in today's world to get caught up in a back and forth debate about something, unless it's a productive debate. Now that's one thing, right? So you have positive conflict, which is that healthy, productive debate, and then you have destructive conflict. And the part that the vast majority of people get tangled in is the destructive conflict. Because there is, in its essence, <clears throat> a very strong desire and need to not only be heard, but to actually have your perspective be the reigning perspective, right? So that's the biggest key right there. Sometimes it's an ego thing. More often than not, you have yeah. a little bit of ego that's associated with preference. And, it, and where, God, I'm trying to remember, where was I when I heard this? Oh, it was, so the guy that I wrote the book with, well, his name is William Branham. He's a retired Navy SEAL. The guy who wrote the forward for our book is Rob O'Neill, and he's the guy that took out Bin Laden. And mm -hmm. so Will was on Rob's podcast recently, and, and Rob had said something that was so profound, and I loved it, because they were talking about mission planning, right? And Rob says, isn't it always that your plan is always the best plan <laughs> that's drafted <laughs> out and no one else's like everybody else's suck, but yours is always the best plan. That's, that's what that is. Right. And that that's right where that comes from. And so when we have an idea, like we have an attachment to that idea, or if we have a suggestion, we have a personal attachment to that. We may have personal investment in it. Yeah. It's what we created and it's what we want to put out there. And what happens is that laden with the best of intentions that somebody is putting something out there to be the absolute best solution for something. Ultimately, right. what happens is that we can't separate ourselves from that attachment. Yeah. And so that's when that's when the that's when the ego really starts to kick in and we start getting upset and ticked off. Now, that's a little bit different 
And then somebody actually saying something that is outside of a code of conduct, which therefore leads to whatever it was that was said or done being offensive, right? Because right. we also have the ability to determine what is offensive and what isn't. Yes. But if it's outside of the code of conduct and it's not something that is expected, then yeah, that's going to be offensive by its just in its general of its nature. And so, you know, the thing about high performing teams, or if you have, maybe you don't have a high performing team, but you have a highly productive team is if they embrace the diversity of thought that exists within the team, I'm talking about thought. I'm not talking about DE and I stuff. I'm talking about our diverse thoughts, because we come from different backgrounds, we come from different places, we've had different experiences, we have different education, right? We have different strengths, we have different fears, mm -hmm. we have different concerns, right? So if we embrace that and give it a shot in, right. oh God, I want to say a regulated manner, that's not what I want to say, in a manner to which it's facilitated well. Right. then that team becomes extremely productive. That means that the team has to have specific rules in place in order to accept that. So I'm going to go back to the SEAL teams again because it's such a great example. In the SEAL teams, when they get together and they start hashing out stuff, they're, they're throwing ideas, suggestions, and recommendations on the table. The rest of the team, for the most part, has the mindset of, is this going to meet our number one objective? If it doesn't meet the number one objective, it's not worth pursuing. Right. So if you have a group of people that are sitting around and they're throwing out the ideas, and we now know, because we're dealing with the law of exposure here, once you've been exposed to this, can't be unexposed. So we know that when they start throwing their ideas in, in the hat and in the ring, there's an expectation that's going to be viewed for it. Right. But- if it doesn't align with the objective, then it has no merit and we have to be okay with divorcing from that. Right. So it's like dating an idea and then divorcing it when it doesn't work out. Yeah. So, and that, you know, the team, when you have a mature team that's done this enough times, they will be able to self-regulate. And right. that's ultimately where you want to be having a team that will self-regulate when it comes through appreciating the diversity of thought and being effective in the beginning, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you got, not going to happen. And I think that's what is missing from this kind of conversation is that people will believe that, you know, like, okay, I'm going to make a strategic leadership change in how I, how I deal with this. And I'm going to start doing this. And then what you're going to find is a, a tremendous amount of chaos, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go, oh my God, well, like, what happened? This is supposed to work. Well, the thing is, is that you don't have a team that has gone through all the stages of shifting and changing and adapting yeah. in this new pursuit. And right. so what you're going to get is chaos, but you have to, you have to facilitate it and you're going to make mistakes facilitating. That's fine. You're going to figure out what's working and what doesn't work. Right. But the biggest question, the biggest cheat, and I mean, do you want to time collapse this process mm -hmm. is that somebody puts out an idea and all of a sudden everybody's hackles are up. Or even if it's not one that creates tension and hackles, the question that needs to be asked, and this is how you really master the art of channeling potential disagreements is in and put it and convert them into productive conversations is you have to ask the question, is this going to help us sell more X? Or is this going to help us do whatever, right? I had a boss who was awesome at this. He's one of my favorite all-time bosses. I still talk to him this day. Creeps him out when I write about him in, in my books. But <laughs> he's such a genius when it comes to this stuff. Anytime somebody would, anytime somebody had a question about something or had a suggestion, he would come up and he would, he would say, okay, is it going to help us sell more cars? Yeah. That's our number one business objective. And if they said no, then he's like, I hear what you're saying, but it's not the right avenue. If it doesn't right. help us achieve that, it's not the right direction to go. Now, if you, you know, if you figure out how that's going to help us do it, I'm all ears. Right. Yeah. And he was really fantastic about that. I like that. I like that. 
I think it's really good to have someone that's open minded and is willing to listen. And, you know, especially when you have a, a you're, you know, when you're when you're changing things around, it gets really complicated because when you're in a, in a, in a business and maybe a new person steps in and they have all these great ideas and they want to change, start changing things because they see certain areas need help and they're not making it as much in, in certain areas that they should. And then all of a sudden they start implementing all these ideas. And then for whatever reason, people are not used to it. And all of a sudden these changes, it, it goes into chaos and, and things aren't done as efficiently. And you see a lot of mistakes being made. You see a lot of uh, things not getting done the way they're supposed to. And if they're dealing with clients or consumers, you know, they're having problems because the flow isn't there. It's just the structure is kind of broken because this new structure has come in and people aren't prepared and they're not, and they're, they don't know how to implement it. Have you seen that a lot? Oh yeah. That's so there's a dynamic change shift that takes place and there's our director of security here. I just got a promotion into uh inspector of trash as well the other day. So <laughs> <laughs> he's doing his job right now. So I'm good with it. Um, it is. And what happens is that when, when you, when you shift the sands, right. And you attempt something new, there's nothing wrong with that, but what it does, and you have to be prepared for this. You have to think through like, how am I going to manage through this? And what happens is that you actually interrupt everybody's mastery of something. Yeah. That's what change does. And that's the reason why people don't like it. It's not, and, and you'll read articles. It's like, oh yeah, because people are complacent and they're like, yeah, well, they're comfortable. Well, yeah, it's because they're mastered something. And that's what happens when you master something. Yeah. You, you're competent, right? And now throwing in something that changes, what happens is that you, it's like taking a needle and dragging it across a 45 record, you zoop, right? It, yeah. it completely disrupts that mastery. And so what happens is that people go through four stages. They go, so when before you make the change, everybody's in this forming stage, which just simply means that like, we know what we're doing. We're very comfortable with it. We got this, right? <laughs> then we go in and we make the change. Well, guess what? You get a swoop, you get a down and you get into this position where it's called uh, storming. And, and storming yeah. is the perfect word for it, right? And everybody's yeah. just like this and they're mentally trying to figure this out. And then all of a sudden, then all kinds of conflict arises. And, you know, now we got to figure out this dynamic and this dynamic. And what about this? And it's like, it literally just like throwing a boulder in a puddle. And that's what people feel like, even though it could be just a small change. Right. And the cool thing is, is that this process that I'm describing can happen in a matter of minutes, moments, seconds, days weeks months years right yeah it, there's no restricted timeline as is this but we're all going to go through exactly the same thing so um you know remember the last time somebody made a change where it felt like throwing a boulder into a puddle right you're experiencing the frustration you're uncomfortable because you don't know where you stand you don't yeah. know how this is this going to make more work for me and crap now i gotta learn something new and you know, I've got all this other stuff going on. You know what I mean? It's just like, that's yeah. what storming is all about. Then once that period is done and, and people are like, you know, uncomfortable with it, they're moving through the motions, they're going through their yeah, buts, what ifs, and how did we, and we have to fix this and this doesn't work. And, you know, we got to take this person off the project because they're not whatever. Then we get up to, we get an upslope, which means that we're now getting into, we're normalizing. Like, yeah like a big plastic bag outside, I'm sure. <laughs> We're normalizing, which means that everything is chilling out. People are getting comfortable. They've reestablished their patterns. They've reestablished their cadence, their rhythms. Like, okay, we got communication down. We ironed out all of the hiccups. We don't have any more surprises coming out, right? That's all norming. Once they've mastered, so they've that's when they create that new level of mastery. Then right. it comes to performing. Sure where they actually see massive, positive, long-term productive results as a result of, of getting that mastery. Now they can start taking it to the next level. Right. So think about this when somebody brand new comes to the team. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, that is a complete upend, right? I mean, it was different like when we were kids and like we moved throughout the country and a new person showed up, right? They would go through the exact same thing, but- 
when you bring a new person into the team, you don't know what you're getting because you weren't the one doing the interviewing, right? As an employee, that's what's going on in people's minds. So they introduce this person. This person has come, come from a different background. They, you know, may or may not have the skills that you need as a teammate. And it's a new personality. It's somebody that has new beliefs. We don't know what they are just yet. It's this process of, right? So just introducing somebody to a team puts them through that forming, storming, norming, and performing. It's way more intense when a new leader comes in because Mm -hmm. they have to experience that over and over and over and over and over and over again with every change that's taking place, right? Yes. So, you know, that for some people, they would consider that as adversity, right? right? When all it is, is just an interruption of mastery. And when you deal with a high performing team, high performing teams are very resilient to this right? Mm -hmm. They've mastered the wave. Like it's like they surf through change better than anybody else. They they Mm -hmm. still go through their stuff, the exact same thing, but they have a different mental attitude about it. And so it allows them to remain focused and allows them to remain productive, right? Even when dealing with what seems to be difficult people or diverse perceptions of something, right? what happens is if they handle it well, they, it strengthens the team. It doesn't weaken them. They right. embrace it. That's so good. You know, I, I, I think that's really good when it comes to dynamic, dynamic teams that are really productive, but that when you have a lot of, you know, smaller businesses or you have businesses that the, you know, that have a different structure, you know, a lot of times when, when a new person comes in and they don't know the protocol yet, they're learning everything, or they might have, or they might have the personality where they get overwhelmed really easily. You know, they have what it takes, but, you know, under pressure, especially with a dynamic team, they get overwhelmed because they're not used to the go, 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 go. You know, this is how we have to do it. You know, we have this many people we have to see or work with today. We have to get these many things out today. And they start to get really overwhelmed. And sometimes the worst comes out of people when they're overwhelmed. They have the anxiety and they get snippy and, you know, they start to, you know, the communication skills kind of decrease because they're just overwhelmed. You know, how do you work with someone that is is having a hard time, those difficult people? What would be some suggestions that you may give that would be good for, for companies or businesses, you know, to work with those people who are difficult to work with? Yeah. So I want to take a quick step back to what you were talking about with the team, because you brought up a, a, a pretty impressive thought. Um and I've actually never tied the two of these things together. So I'm about ready to. I'm pretty excited about this. So <laughs> <laughs> have you ever put yourself in a situation? You've started something new. It's it's a it's a stretch for you. I mean, it's a good stretch, right? And then yeah. you're in it. And then all of a sudden the overwhelm kicks in and you're like, what the hell did I just get myself into? <laughs> right? Have you been that way? So the moment you acknowledge, what the hell did I just get myself into? You're going to be just fine, Right. You just acknowledge that you're in it. Okay, I got it. And you're going to be just fine. But teams also have a different timeline as to what they feel is acceptable and not acceptable when it comes to somebody, you know, working, you know, becoming part of the team or doing the job. I'm going to tell you right now that if you are a leader and you set the expectation that, listen, this person is coming in, they're going to need six months of a runway to even start to feel comfortable doing this. Right. It's going to take them a good 18 months to get solid and comfortable. And I expect you guys to honor that. Oh my God. You just saved. I think that was my fault. You just totally saved not only your team, a bunch of headaches, you a bunch of headaches, and then reinforce it. But the things you can't lean on it as an excuse if somebody's not doing the job, right? Right. People who are in a highly professional skill set, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, right? Like those are extremely high, but new yeah. people coming into a team, you, it like HR people, I tell this all the time, I'm like cut yourself a break for the first six months because you're going to be completely overwhelmed. Oh yeah. Like you're, you're learning the company. You're dealing with all sorts of stuff. You're also dealing with people like trying to figure out if you're an evil HR person or if you're a good HR person, right? 
They don't right. know. And so you've got more coming at you than the average person. But but if you look at it, when anybody joins a new team, just take sales, right? Sales are instantly, is this guy going to be dragging us down or are they going to be moving us forward? Are they getting right. the information or are they trying to use us as a crutch? Are they wasting my time by not doing what I'm telling them to do? Or are they like super innovative and holy crap, I can learn from them, right? It yeah. takes time in a minimum, minimum. If you have somebody who's fully capable of actually doing the job, minimum six months mm -hmm. before they get out of their own individual overwhelm. They're figuring out their new job. They're figuring out the benefits. They're figuring out the culture, the dynamic, what they can do, what they can't do. They're going to make mistakes. They're training, you know, give them a break, you know, mm -hmm. give them a break six months. And if they're not settled more in six months, now you got something to work with, you know, yeah. and it's going to take them 18 months to get that level of competency to where they just feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not like drowning. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you're going to find out in six months how difficult somebody is going to be. In fact, you're probably going to find out a lot sooner. Yeah. So when you have somebody that's coming in and they're difficult and your people who have these levels of mastery start seeing that there's pushback, likely they are going to go, hmm, right? They're going to start building a wall. Yeah. And they're not going to want to relate to that person anymore. They're, they're I've given them an X number of chances and they've screwed them all up. So I'm done. This is no longer my problem. And now anytime something bad comes up, I'm going to raise my hand. I'm either going to stay silent or I'm going to start talking about it with the boss. Right. So their timeline for that is going to be way shorter than six months. Yeah. It's usually about three. So what do you do when you have a good employee? Now you, you've hired them They're They, oh. they have what it takes to do the job, but they're difficult. And just like a domino effect, especially when you're in a department or, you know, you have the same people you see every day and it's X amount of people and you have that one difficult person, but they're doing a good job. They just, they're just either complainers or they're just, you know, they can't, I can't handle this or I don't want to do this. And why do I have to do this? And, you know, and it affects the whole department, the whole unit. And, you know, so what, you know, what do you do, especially after you've trained the person and you spent so much time training the person, you know, someone has taken time out to train them here. Someone's trained them here and you've invested so much into this one employee so they can become a part of the unit so they can be part of that dynamic unit and grow with them, but they have, they're difficult and they, you know, and they're affecting the whole group because a lot of times I see, you know, when someone is difficult, it affects everybody. That negativity just kind of draws and it kind of pulls down the whole entire department. Yeah. Well, difficult is also in relative terms too, right? So if you're talking about somebody who's caustic, toxic, and negative, but does exactly what's expected of them, but the price tag of that comes with somebody who's capable of negatively impacting the culture, you have to make a decision. What's more important, the right. culture and the cohesion of the team or having somebody in the seat who just gets the job done. Yeah. So it depends on where your commitment is. And, and, and this is where your fellow teammates and the people that report to you are going to start criticizing you is that yeah. if you have spent all this time building a highly cohesive, awesomely working team together. Mm -hmm. And, and don't forget more often than not, those individuals are not showing their hand to you. They're showing yeah. it to everybody else. I remember yeah. years ago, um, I was, I, I just did a little putsy part-time job, right? just to give myself something, a break from sitting in my, my Harry Potter office, my closet. <clears throat> and, <laughs> and I just, you know, went and the thing was, is that the team was good, but yeah. they would complain about the company and they would do it in front of the customers. And we're not talking about customers that just could do it from here. We're talking about people that had to stand there for a long period of time so that we could process all of their paperwork and get, cause it was a highly regulated type of industry that I was working in. Right. So they mm -hmm. would hear all of this 
And so mm-hmm. when I would talk about it, because everybody knew my background, right? And when I talk about it to leadership, I mean, you got some challenges out here because they would ask. And I said, you have this person, this person, and, you know, the other day they were kind of sharing about this. And I, although I completely understand where they come from, but they were doing it in front of customers and the manager right. got really pissed off. And she goes, well, they never say that in front of me. And I'm like, well, of course they're not going to. What does it matter yeah. with you? You know, mm-hmm. it's like, of course they're not. <laughs> nobody, nobody complains in front of the boss. They don't do exactly. it. Right. No. So mm-hmm. when your people are telling you, multiple people come up and explain that, like, you know, we got this guy that's constantly doing this. And then you take this position. Well, I've never seen it. It's like, listen, you've got overwhelming information coming to you. And yes. if you don't do anything, guess what? You are tearing apart the cohesion of your team because your people are going to stop trusting you. Yes. They were there first. 100%. They know how you operate. They yes. know how you want things to be done. And if it's like, well, I haven't seen it, so therefore I can't. No, you can still address it. Yes. And you can. And if you're waiting for somebody to do something like that or say, like, hey, listen, you know, we assigned you a mentor or we've got, you know, this is, this is the feedback that I'm getting. Can you help me understand what's going on? Right. Right. And if you've taken my impact script course, you'll know that that's the first phrase that I use. Help me understand. Help me understand what's going on. Like, what are you seeing when you're in this group? And what you might learn is that I don't feel like I fit in here. Well, why is that? Well, because every time I give it an idea, I'm always constantly getting shot down. Yeah. Like, understand that there's always a reason why somebody does something. So yeah. if you have somebody that is being difficult, have you explored the possibility that they're being difficult because they are feeling defensive or mm-hmm. like they're having a, a bad experience? Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with asking the question, like, help me understand what's going on with you. Like, how are things going? Like I was in a situation years ago where I told him, I told my wife, he said, so how are things going? I said, do you really want the honest truth? He goes, yeah. I said, they're treating me like I'm a child. Right. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've been with this company for five years. Yeah. I've been in a different part of it, but I don't need people to like, you know, I get it. It's like, you guys wanted me here because of the value I bring from the field. But now when I start talking about it, y'all treat me like I've got three heads. Right. You know? And I was very, very upfront about that. I said, I tell them what the experience is like being at the field, but nobody wants to hear it. Right. Because they think that they know I've been there. Right. And it, and it, and it was a clash, right? So therefore I was the one that was being difficult. Mm. And, and that's just a personal experience. Now, granted, did I always handle everything? Well, no, I didn't. And that's fine. Right. I learned from it. That's what's important. Um, but you know, there's always a reason it's, yeah. it's just incumbent that you figure that out. Right. You can't fix it all the time. And yeah. that's another thing too. I always tell people this, this is something I did with my team. And I, I think I may have said this in the first episode, but we're going to repeat it. Cause it's so good. Um, <laughs> that when you have conflict and you, like I used to set the expectation, I still do with anybody that works together on a project. It's like, if you guys are having a problem, Y'all are adults. I expect you to sit down and fix it, figure it yeah. out and fix it. Have a conversation. Don't do this texting thing. I want you to sit, no emails back and forth, sit down and have a conversation and work it out. Cause I know you can do it. Right. And if you guys come to an insurmountable, uh, insurmountable obstacle, then you're going to get me involved, but you may not like the outcome. Yeah. So that's what I used to do. What a lot of people do is that they'll say, I hear you're doing this. And immediately what happens? The walls go up. The defense is on full arm. And for those of you who are Star Trek fans, shields are up. (laughs) 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 We're going to put this in a a phrase that y'all are going to get. Shields are at maximum instantly, Mm -hmm. right? Now you have to work three, four times as hard to bring that back down because that statement, although it's you're inquiring by nature, yeah. It is a it is it is a very intrusive type of way of doing that. So yeah. help me understand. Like I, you know, I'm getting some feedback. I'm not gonna tell you what the feedback is, but I'm getting feedback. And it seems like not everybody's on the same page. So help me understand what's going on. Right. There isn't a person in there that's not gonna answer that question. They're gonna it's like it's a very 
it's a very um, non-intrusive way. It doesn't develop defenses. Some people might get a little nervous because they're like, oh crap, now I have to deal with this situation, right? And that's fine. Yeah. But it's definitely not an accusatory statement. Right. Wow. You know, I, I think that that's great advice. You know, I, I really think it's good that people, you know, have the ability where they, they could sit down and maybe discuss it and go over, go over what's going on. But also you do have those personalities that they, people don't always take constructive criticism well. And when you sit down and you're talking and you're, you know, you're going over the facts and you're, you're, you're going over what you observe through your eyes, you know, sometimes even, even if you're right spot on and you're giving advice, you know, to the person because you've been in their spot or you've, you know, you've seen it, you've witnessed it, you know, what works, you know, what doesn't work. And you try to help the person to gear them because you want them to succeed in your heart. But then the problem is, is that that person, they are people who, no matter what you say and how nice you say it, they, their constructive criticism is not in their vocabulary. And people get very defensive sometimes when you give constructive criticism. How do you deal with, with a personality like that? So I don't give constructive criticism because nobody likes criticism. There's right. really no such thing as of criticism being constructive. Criticism is criticism, right? So I give developmental feedback. Gotcha. And what I tell them, it's like, I'm going to give you some developmental feedback. And when they hear that, they're like, all right, they may not like it, but yeah. they're not being criticized. And so what you're kind of doing is you're kind of, you're not forecasting, but you're frank, you're pre-framing, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is some developmental feedback. We got an opportunity. You said you have an opportunity here to take something that may or may not be working very well. It doesn't work for the group well right now. And you right. have the choice to be able to take this and work on it. And yes. so here's the feedback, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> when you ask a question, change how you ask the question instead of being, you know, you can still be direct, mm -hmm. but maybe you're softening your approach on it. Still ask the same question. And if yeah. at any point it involves what the hell is the matter with you, I might edit that out, right? <laughs> That's what you need to edit out, right? That's not criticism, right? That's good. That's good, juicy intel. Right. And so, you know, sometimes it's, you know, if you have somebody that's coming across as caustic with the question, it's like, you can still ask a direct question. There's nothing right. wrong with that. But, mm -hmm. but how you say it. Yeah. is is also just as much as what you say right right because i can say the i can give somebody the exact same expectation word for word but i can say it in a multitude of different ways in which that person will accept it and that's through my tone my inflection my timing yes. you know the environment in which i do it on if right. you have somebody like, for instance, who's showing up late all the time mm -hmm. and a lot of what a lot of leaders will do is that, and, and these are more managers rather than leaders, but um, what people will do is that they're afraid to address the person one-on-one -on -one because their fear of either failure or making the situation worse or fear of conflict. Right. So what they do is they address the situation to the whole group. Mm. Well, you may be speaking to the one person, but guess what? You've now just pissed off seven other people who show up on time and now they're being scolded like a child for something that they're not doing. Right. It doesn't work very well. Yeah. Now, if the mat, if the, if the bulk of the, it, so if you have multiple people, multiple, I don't even know what I just said, multiple, multiple people that are not doing something right. So you have a new initiative and we're missing a couple of steps. Does it make sense to address the whole group? Yes. Why? Because not everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. Many people may have the exact same question as somebody else when they raise their hand. Right. And the people who are getting it have probably learned something that nobody else has just yet. So that, yes, that absolutely makes sense. But when you're trying to address everybody in a whole for something that one person is doing, you're actually driving morale down because you're treating everybody else as if they're doing something wrong too right go address the problem not the vast of the people and you can hold to this exact same expectation as everybody else right and just like everybody else is coming in on time i expect you to do exactly the same thing 
That's a very nice way of saying it. Or you can also yeah. say, everybody else is coming in on time and I expect you to do exactly the same thing. Right. Right? Yeah. Two completely different approaches, exact same phrase, exact same wording, exact same expectation. Different, different. Approach. You would use those two in different situations, right? Right. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, you know, we've, we've covered a lot of different aspects about how to deal with difficult people and, you know, how to, you know, keep, you know, a productive and, and high performing team, you know, when you have difficult people in your, in your team, you know, are there other things that we haven't talked about that you really feel that we should emphasize on, you know, throughout the, our conversation? You know, when you're trying, and, and I want to end with this, if this is okay, because I think it's a, I think it's a good way to wrap up. We just, I just gave you like knowledge bombs all over yeah. the place. <laughs> when you're trying these things out, cause you're going to try something and you may fail or you may not, and it may not be quite like what you want Give yourself some grace. Yeah. Give yourself some grace because leading is not easy and right. you know, it's okay to try something and fail. There have been times where I've tried like leaning on somebody in a way, like I heard something at that. I'm like, Ooh, that would work really good on this person. And I tried and I tried, <laughs> I tried it one time and she looked at me and she goes, what are you doing? And I said, apparently something that's not working very well. And we actually got a real big laugh at it. She goes, what are you trying to accomplish? I'm like, I'm just trying to get you to do this. And she goes, well, why don't you just tell me? I said, cause I have seven times and you're still not doing it. And she goes, Oh, <laughs> it's a giant approach. Apparently it didn't work. You obviously now realize that you're not doing something right. We've we've had the conversation seven times. Can we get it now? She starts laughing and she goes, yeah, I I will. <laughs> I said, Don't do that to me again, right? And we just, we got a kick out of it, right? Yeah, That's yeah. The it's not the rule. But, you know, I made, you know, did I feel bad about screwing something up? No, it was actually stupid and hilarious, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, it's like she got the message. And sometimes the end result isn't what we think it's going to be. The right. most effective things that, that can take place are the things that we don't expect. So yeah. when that kind of thing happens, roll with it. Right. Celebrate it. Right. That's yeah. thing too. when you, when you get a win, celebrate your wins. You, you gotta, know. you gotta feed your brain some positivity. You have to. Oh, hundred percent. Definitely. Now you have recently come out with a book that you just recently, yes. can you tell us a little about that book? Cause I'm really excited because it hit yes. the best list also. So congratulations. Thank you very much. It's called mission ready. It's super shiny. If you haven't noticed, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's called mission ready, building high performing teams from the battlefield to the boardroom. And it's, it's, I, it's, I co-authored it with a friend of mine, William Branham. I mentioned him earlier. He's a retired US SEAL. And the beginning of the book, Will takes his principles of leadership. And then, like I said, I come in on the back end of it and I start talking about my principles of leadership. And, uh, but it's all people based. So when you're executing change, when it comes to, you know, driving leadership, like if you're following what Will is doing, then you're going to have all these people things that are going to start coming up. Right. And then yeah. it, it'll, it'll help and help you navigate. Cause we talked about that earlier in the very beginning. It's like, you try something and all of a sudden your team's going like, what, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and that's what it's about. Um, it became a bestseller on Amazon. So we're super excited about that. This makes my third bestseller. I'm super happy about yeah. that. Very proud. And, um, yeah, it's it's a really great read because it's a based on principles, not preferences. And that's where right. we get into trouble. It's like if we're trying to manage people's preferences, that's it's subjective. Yes. It's not objective. And so that's like if you really want to be a strong leader, it's like your print your principles have to be objective. Your actions have to be objective, right? They can't be subjective. You can't right. you can't be one of those leaders. And I I existed in this environment for a long time. To where it was say what do what I say, not what I do. That does not work. Mm -hmm. You cannot sit there. We're we're in election year. And yeah. we know how fun that is. And it's just getting worse every every four years, it just gets worse. You can't say to people, we don't do politics. 
and then turn around and start having a conversation with whatever party you're in favor of and not. Or you can't be spreading funny jokes about political stance if you're telling people like that doesn't work. Right. All that just shows people is that they can't trust your word. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust is huge. So trust. Yes. And you're going, you're going to tick off about half of your, half of your, half of your staff. Right. And I remember in 2008 when Obama was elected and it doesn't matter who, what side I'm on or not. I thought it was incredibly arrogant of our team to cheer out when the vote, when the results came back that he got it. And they were like up and down the hall cheer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you understand that there's five other sections of people that don't think like you. Right. And you're now, What? You know, yeah. and it just, it, 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 I remember that moment. It just absolutely bothered me. And I didn't want to participate in it. I didn't participate. Matter of fact, I made myself extremely scarce because it did. It ruffled a lot of feathers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, that they always say, don't talk about religion, don't talk about politics. The two things that are most Instant controversial, fight. you know. <laughs> Instant fight. <laughs> politics, are, like, if you like to debate and you love to argue, you just start talking about faith and faith and politics. Yeah. The two, yeah. the two things that have the most controversy and you'll see people start to get reared up and fired and. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. No time flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't, yeah you, yeah you gotta ride the dragon you gotta be good at riding the dragon on that one. <laughs> oh yeah for sure <laughs> now if we had to take everything we talked about today because we covered a lot of areas um you know what are some of the important factors that you'd like to emphasize today well i would say look you know here's the thing when you're talking to your team you got to remember that change takes time and you're interrupting mastery. So you have to come up with contingency plans on how things are going to happen. You also want to make sure that you're framing what it is that you are about ready to initiate and make sure that everybody understands that ideas and suggestions are welcome so long as that they align with, you know, the end outcome. If they yeah. don't, you as the leader are the one that has to manage through that. You have to facilitate the conversation. If you don't, yeah. it's going to be a runaway train. And that's mm-hmm. no fun because then you're just like, oh, well, all right. And you can always get it back because I taught you exactly how to do it. So, yes. um, yeah, I would say those are the things because like you can still set the same expectation. Here's the last piece. But you can do you the approach can be different every single time. And you're still managing the exact same expectation. You're not managing the individual differently. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, can you tell everybody the different services that you provide? Because you do a lot of different things and you have courses and everything. Can yeah. you talk to everybody and tell everybody what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So actually, timing is perfect on this. So <laughs> I have a new program that is literally dropping this week. I didn't even think to tell you about this. And it's called leadwithfortitude.com. It's not what it's called, but that's the, that's the URL. And it yeah. is um, it is a 10 part course on dealing with difficult people. And um, you can get the first chapter. Are you ready for this? For $37. Wow. Yeah. And the first chapter, the whole series completely focuses in on you as an individual. Mm-hmm. In other words, we're here to get you into shape on dealing with difficult people. There's videos that you get to watch. It's all self-paced. And then every week for the next 10 weeks, if you buy the full program, because you can get the full program, every week is a new challenge. So you'll get to sit down. You can't just take a course on this and like instantly get it. You got to work on yourself, which means that you have to see where your own vulnerabilities are. And so we facilitate that. So we actually have journaling exercise every single week. For each and every single topic. So we cover different topics such as like, how do you deal with a narcissist? You know, what are, what happens when your body goes through the, the stress? Yeah. Right. What are some, what's some of the psychology behind it? Because look, business is 80% psychology, 20% action. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. If you don't get the people side of your business, you're not going to like what you do. Right. 
you really aren't. Whether you're a visionary or if you're an ops person, if your people side is not functioning well, everybody's not going to like each other. But if it's not functioning well, then there's yeah. always a lot of drama and you're not instilling these things and, and figuring out how to deal with these difficult people issues, you're not going to enjoy what you're doing and you're getting exhausted. So yes. other than taking a vacation, let's get you some skill sets. So uh, fortitude really is about managing what you perceive as the unmanageable. I love it. I'm I love so it. excited about it. Yeah, that sounds amazing because you know what? I think everybody could use a course like that because not only can you use it in the work field, you could take the things that you learn and you could apply it to personal experiences in your yep. own life. Yes. And it really, it could help you overall, you know, it could help you because we, we, we meet people all the time that are difficult. We have people in our families that are difficult. We have friends that are difficult. You know, we may love them at the same time. We may hate them at the same time because they're great people, but they're just difficult. Mm. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, look, you can use this on your friends. You can use it on your enemies. You can use it at mm -hmm. church. You can use it in your social clubs. You can use it on your kids. You can use it on your in-laws. You can use it on your outlaws, right? There's so right. many different places where you can actually use this. And when you understand how these things start coming up, you're just better able to navigate through them. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when you have better relationships with people, you get to appreciate all the good things and all the blessings that they provide for you in your life. Oh, How amazing would that be? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Sometimes the, I didn't mean to step on you, but sometimes the blessing is just getting like a complainer to shut up. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah, so that's what, so that's what fortitude is. And I am super excited about it. Um, I do have a new program that is coming out after that which I can, I can share a little bit about, but it's called the leadership survival kit. And it's actually going to be part of a three pronged thing. Um, my, so it's going to incorporate really in-depth leadership training on like how you build the team, yeah. right? What do you need to look out for? And these, and what this is, is a compilation of all of my top selling signature courses like the things that i get contracted for the things i talk about in a long time it's a it's a whole package kind of a deal it's a premium deal it's going to be absolutely awesome that is the people phase and then we've got will who's going to be doing his leadership thing as part of the leadership survival kit and that is the beginning stage and then we've got the high performing mission ready side of it so which is also be part of the leadership survival kit so we're going to have this in three stages so um, working your way. So, but this is an awesome progression, right? Because you have yeah. to start with you first before you do anything, right. before you, before you learn anything new, you have to address this. Yes. So let's work on this first, right? Once Stop. you get this down, then you can, so it's all about progressive skill building when it comes to actually dealing with the people side of leadership. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I'm so and excited about it. <laughs> And you do speak in, and you do a whole bunch of other things too. So yeah, I, I speak, I write. Yeah. Um, yeah. My goal, my ultimate goal when it comes to speaking is to be on a stage of 10,000 people. And so far I've spoken to just a little over 3000. Oh, I love it. Congratulations. I love yeah. it. I love it. You know, um, where can people find you? Tell everybody your website. So if you want to connect with me directly, um, I made it really easy because you can see like my last name, which is right there. Not always easy to say and spell and remember. So um, yobrenda.com is the best way to connect with me. Uh, you can go ahead and put your information in. You'll get all of this good stuff that I was talking about. In addition to that, when you do connect me, I'm going to give you a free gift. And that is my free Inbox course. Uh, I already gave you a nugget earlier on, uh, but I have learned three scripts. Um, I've, I've worked on them. I've crafted them. They have helped me so much in a wide variety of situations to actually hone down and really cut through the drama and get to the heart of what's going on. I gave you one of them earlier, and that's helped me understand, like help me understand what's going on, help me. And if you use that, you're going to see how impressive it is that you can actually pull information out and still have all of this, you know, um, 
strife and everything that's going on around you. It is extremely effective because it's a non-defensive language, but it is incredibly powerful. So right. there's three scripts. If you put your name in, tell me underneath when you put your name in, there's a little spot. Tell me what you heard today that really just kind of resonated with you that wowed you. Um, Cause I'd love to hear about this. I love to hear what makes what people make something like a shift in them, like makes them feel good. Right. Not just feel good, but like gives them something of value that they can take and actually go use down the road. And what will happen is if you connect with me that way, you know, Brenda.com, then uh, you'll get in on all the scoop. And I am one of those people that gives out a ton of value. So everything you get from me is going to be loaded with really good, juicy information. I love it. I think, you know, for now on, I'm not even going to try to attempt to say your, your <laughs> last time on the show. I'm just going to say, yo, Brenda, it's yo, yo Brenda. Brenda. That's right. <laughs> I should make a shirt that says Yo Brenda on it. Actually, you know what? I was on a conference call earlier with Will and Will has a CBD company uh, called Naked Warrior Recovery and his slogan is get naked. And it's a philosophy of thinking. It's like, you know, strip away your fears, you know, get yeah. down to like, it's an ego drag. So he sent me one of his shirts that says get naked at about three years ago. And I'm walking down the street and these two older people on this bike, their bikes riding along, having a great day. The husband sees my shirt and he starts doing this. <laughs> and that wife chewed my butt out. Like, how dare you wear a shirt? Like, I told him, I said, dude, oh I can goodness. never wear a shirt again. <laughs> like, I'm going to get shot. <laughs> oh my God. That's oh, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> so i think maybe instead of doing get naked i should just have yo brenda <laughs> i like that okay. i think you should definitely yeah. definitely i love it i love it <laughs> i gotta tell you brenda this has been amazing i loved having you on the show today this is a great topic you know and, and i can't wait to see your your new course and i think that that is a, a really great course also you, all your courses are great but i love working with complicated people because you know that is something everybody has to deal with in their life and to have those strategies and those tools and techniques that you could apply to your life, I, I think is amazing. So, you know, I, you. I, I, I am looking forward to seeing that course and well, I really am. <laughs> I'll send you the link or oh, you got the right. link. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So everybody, uh, you know, again, Brenda, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. I really appreciate you. And I can't wait to see you again. And everybody, you know where you can find her. It's yobrenda.com. And she'll, you can find all her stuff on there. And uh, once again, if you like this show and you, uh, well, you know, I welcome you to follow us, like us and comment and tell us, you know, what you think. And uh, we'd love to have you because we have some great shows ahead. And we really would love to have you, you know, be a part of our community and really learn from all these great people who come on like yo brenda <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much i appreciate being here oh you're very welcome and you know you have a great day brenda thank you so much thanks you too bye bye <laughs>